England and Euro 2020, did part of you want to be out there? Look, you always want to play football, but I made a decision. How do you deal with the, the mental challenge to still be at the top? I think for me, it's always been being able to talk. The Jamie Vardy diet of Red Bull and coffee. I still have my Red Bulls and my coffee in the morning, yeah. In a word, how do you sum up the FA Cup final and what that meant to you? No, it was massive, not just not just to myself, but I think to everyone on that pitch and, and the club itself. It was it was really big, something we'd not won before. So to get over the line and create that bit of history for the club was was really emotional and and really deserved in the end. I think you made history. Just just tell us that piece of history that you made in the FA Cup by playing in the final. Yeah, I mean it was something I'd not not even realised until we was told off the media team here that I'd managed to play in playing every round that was up until the the semis and we got through and then it was a make sure you put the work in so that you get selected for the final so that you've you've managed to play in every round. So have they written that into the Jamie Vardy film script now? <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I don't uh, don't really have anything to, to do with that side of things, so we'll have to wait and see. But it's pushing along, is it, the film? Yeah, I'm hearing so. I'm hearing it's it's moving along, but like I said, I don't have much input. I had better input right at the start and no, it's up to the director and everything of how they want that film to go. How old are you now? 34. How old do you feel? 24. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right answer. Yeah, just it's all about looking after yourself. Just make sure I can be as, as fit and as good shape as possible and waking up every morning still feeling like that. So long may that continue. And that means the Jamie Vardy diet of Red Bull and coffee? Still? Yeah, I still, still have my Red Bulls and my coffee in the morning, yeah. I don't think that'll ever change. It's always worked, so what's the point in trying to change something that's still working? One of the first things Brendan Rodgers did this summer was buy a striker for £22 million. Mm -hmm. So what are you thinking? No, no, it's great. It really is good. I think if you look back last season, there was a lot relying on myself and Kel, so you want that extra person, you want that extra competition because it makes you thrive under it, When especially when you're on the training field, you're all... You all want to better each other, which which brings out the best in yourself. So it's always good to have that competition. And like I said, working out on the training field all together, learning off each other and how we all play can only benefit the club. But do you feel the main man, the go-to striker, still at the start of this season, I've, age 34? I've never felt like that. Mm. Never. I just always go out onto a pitch wanting to, to give 100%, give my all. And that's hopefully what I've been doing for... For the past years and I'll continue to do so. How do you deal with the, the mental challenge to still be at the top, to still be the, the star? It's, like I said, I've not changed any season with, with how I've gone about things. As long as I know in myself that I've given 100% of my ability to, to try and help the team, then then I'm happy and I'll always keep doing that. Nothing Nothing will ever change that. We've seen a lot of talk about mental health though. Can you can you relate to Simone Biles and to Ben Stokes when their mental health they talk about the test of mental health when you're at that level? Yeah, that's listen, there's a lot a lot that's put on you. There's a lot of stresses that come with it. Going into games where oh definitely should win, it might not happen. So you get you get the things that build up in your head sometimes that you you do need to have a little quiet time on your own to to get over these things and no one will know who's not dealing with it, what they're actually going through. So it's just something we have to be careful with. And if someone's mental health has been affected, we have to make sure they're there to support them and or leave them to, to get on with it themselves in the way that they want to deal with it. How have you dealt with it? Have you had your own issues with it? Yeah, you always get slight issues, but I think for me, it's always been being able to talk. I think that's the best way. I think if you build things up, then you're just going to let them keep simmering and simmering and until eventually there's nowhere else they can go and, and they all just explode together. So you have to keep talking about it, just keep trying to keep things under control and using them in a way, if possible, that can make you better as a person and, as in my case, on the pitch as a player. England and Euro 2020, what was it like to watch? No, it's, it was great to watch. Obviously, you want, you want them to do as as good as they can and I think it was a massive achievement to, to get to the final. It's an improvement on on the World Cup and I think you can see that they're going in, in the right direction. So 
I think now it's, for them it's all about getting back and playing as good as they can, making sure they're getting selected again and mm. and looking forward to the World Cup again. And hopefully it'll be another improvement. Did part of you want to be out there? Look, you always want to play football, but I made a decision. Gareth was happy with my decision as well. And that's how I wanted it. I wanted to, if I'd have been carrying on playing and stuff like that, there's more chance that, that my body might start breaking down. So to have that rest for myself personally, it's only benefited me in the off seasons that I've not been involved. So the decision was perfect for me as a as a personal choice. If you played for England in the last three years, do you think you'd be at the level you are now physically? Probably not. Which is clearly going to sustain your career. Yeah, and that was the main choice behind the decision. But what if you win the golden boot and England come calling for Qatar 2022? <laughs> I'll be the same decision. Hmm. Has to be that way, I suppose. Yeah. Your legend is guaranteed at this club, but what more is there left for you? No, there's still a lot more. There's still a lot more things that we want to want to achieve a club. Like when the first day the gaffer comes in, it's all about progression. And I think over the past past few seasons, definitely we've we've done that. Yeah, I know we missed out on on Champions League again last season, but we picked up an FA Cup. And I think if if you'd have been sold that at the start of the season, you'd have probably snatch someone's hands off with that. So it's definitely an improvement. So now it's about setting new targets and, and seeing if we can prove even more. You you are now part of a club in terms of ownership. Yeah. Rochester Rhinos. Yes. Yes. But that wasn't something that looking really far ahead either. Like I mean I've been involved in it now for talks were going nearly two years ago. So managed to to get to this stage now and that's another really exciting thing that that I've got in the background that I don't let interfere with. Obviously, my club, then the football, first come first serve, and nothing will change that. So, something that I'm I'm helping out with in, like I say, in the background, and hopefully we can make that a success as well.